remember, sharks are always out there. Those attorneys are always waiting. That's how they get fed off of people like you. Can't be a little bit pregnant. Either you're covered or you're not. Remember that. Get the right coverage every time. It's worth it in the long run. Yeah, it's, it's more money out of your pocket, but it's an expense that's a lot cheaper to pay an insurance policy. It's a percentage of the claim instead of scratching a check. We just had a, um, an indoor center in New York, popular franchise. They were accused of uh, mol abuse and molestation. Um, didn't have enough people in the bathroom. Little girl was crying. They went in to go see what was going on. Got accused of uh, molestation in the bathroom. Only one employee went in, not two. Paid out over $60,000 in defense costs. Her premiums went from 15000 to 111000 Can't defend it. All right. Inland marine coverage covers your stuff while it's mobile in nature. You should have it. If you have your inventory, could you do, if somebody came, could you operate your business if somebody came and stole everything that you have? No. How long is it going to take for you to get the money to buy it again? You're out of business. So all those parties you had booked, you just lost. Inland marine will take care of that. Fire theft, vandalism, on-premise or mobile in nature, covers your computers, everything you have in your office, does not provide coverage for equipment of others, or if you rent it or borrow it. So if you book a purple dinosaur from these guys, it's not covered under your policy. You can't cover property of others, just like you can't cover acts of others. Your policy is going to cover your stuff only. If you have a loan on it, banks are usually going to want to have it covered. Business income, most people do not get that. That's something that, very important coverage that you want. If somebody breaks in and steals your competitor, <laughs> steals all of your inflatables in your warehouse, and you show up on Monday and you have an empty warehouse, it'll cover for your loss of income until you get back up on your feet again. Very inexpensive coverage, it goes with the property coverage. Most property policies that we look at, they don't add that on. Most inland marine policies, they don't add that on. Most insurance agents don't know to tell you that you need to have that coverage. Do I really need it? Rule number one, can't be a little bit pregnant. You guys are getting it. Commercial auto. Do you load your truck up like this when you're going to an event? <laughs> These guys, guilty. <laughs> Got people hanging off the side. All right, commercial auto. Same as a personal auto policy. Liability, medical, uninsured motorists, underinsured motorists, same stuff. Add your trailers on. Make sure you add your trailers. A lot of people don't add their trailers on. Personal auto policy has a business use exclusion. Um, make sure you have non-owned hired auto. If your employees use their vehicles to go pick up, their policy has an exclusion for business use. So this will cover the liability. It won't cover their car, but it'll cover the liability if they hit a little kid at the park. Um, trailers, trailered units. Anybody have a rock wall, you're a bungee, anything like that? Raise your hand. Your inland marine policies usually exclude that if they're trailered. We just came out with a new program that covers them now because the insurance industry doesn't understand that an entertainment device on a trailer is the only way that you're going to get it there. <laughs> what a concept. Took us a year and a half talking to underwriters and explaining because they don't want the liability coverage on it on the Inland Marine because you set it up and operate it. They don't want it on the commercial auto coverage. So we finally got around that. All right. Uh, <laughs> I probably get maybe four or five people a month and tell me that their insurance agent told them that their personal auto covers them while they do deliveries. That they know that they're in an inflatable business and that they have coverage under their personal auto. They don't need commercial auto. If your agent tells you that, folks, get it in writing. Have them email it to you. Print it out. Send a copy to your mom. Send one to your Uncle Freddie and one to your cousin. Keep one in a file in your, in your desk because in case you have an accident and they try to decline coverage because it was business use, you present that to the attorney and you have coverage. It'll go under his professional liability, his errors and omission, because he lied. He did not know what the policy said inside. Okay? So make sure that you get it in writing. Every single personal auto policy in the United States excludes business use. It's in the policy. Read it. You guys are making me drink. So if you're doing deliveries, folks, make sure you have commercial auto coverage. Non-owned auto, if your employees use their vehicle to pick up or, or deliver, 
you want to make sure you have the non-owned auto. Hired auto covers if you hire a Penske van for an event. You can also cover the physical damage part on that too. All right, if you have a trailer, make sure you add them on. Um, people nowadays are stealing trailers like crazy. Do you have a tongue lock on it? Spend money, get a good $50, $60 tongue lock. Make sure they don't hook up and drive away. We had a boat trailer in our yard. They came in. Um, our buddy asked if he could store it there for a little while. Said, make sure you get a tongue lock. He bought the little cheap one with a little pin. It was $12. They came with a hammer, broke it off, stole this $2,000 trailer. Um, Christmas week, they came in, stole our golf cart. Cut the chain, stole the golf cart. All easy go golf carts use the same key. So they just cut the chain. Um, utility trailers, two, two enclosed trailers, two 20 foot, one 16 foot on the neighborhood. Came in, just stole them right out of the guy's yard. So make sure you secure them. Make sure they're insured. Do I need this coverage? Rule number one, can be a little bit pregnant. Either you got the coverage or you don't. If something comes up missing, don't whine saying you didn't know, because you guys know. All right, workers' comp, the coverage is for employees. It does not cover you. It's mandatory in most states. It does not cover subcontractors. I'll say that again. It does not cover subcontractors. You can call them whatever you want. The world's greatest thing. They're not employees, they're subcontractors. IRS and Department of Labor will have fun with you. You'll be in jail with Bubba. It's called tax evasion. They are employees if you tell them what to do. If you get caught, you will not like the results. Pay the taxes, run your business the right way like a real business. You'll sleep better at night. Workers' comp is used to comply with the uh, state laws. It's a little bit different in each state. Employee can be compensated if he or she is injured while working for you, regardless of your negligence. So if you let somebody use a, an extension cord that's frayed and they get electrocuted, even though that you were wrong to leave that in your inventory, they got injured, you're still going to have coverage under your workers' comp policy. OSHA might have something to say with you, but the workers' comp policy will cover it. All right, so that's covered. Carpet tunnel, bad back, getting drunk, passing out in the bathroom is not covered. Okay, so in case your employees have any questions, show them those three pictures. <laughs> All right, do I need this coverage? Yes, you do, folks. You want to make sure that you have coverage for your employees. They're lifting 300-pound inflatables, plus there will be an injury because they never do it right. EPLI, Employers Practices Liability. Covers your business and yourself against claims by workers that their legal rights as employees of the company have been violated. Very easy. What is it that they can get you for? Rule number one, these are the different types. Discrimination, failure to employ or promote, wrongful termination, breach of contract, or sexual harassment. What is sexual harassment today? Hey, baby. It's as easy as, hey, baby. It's as easy as, did a good job, man. Really oh, appreciate my. it. This trip is paid for. That's it. <laughs> I'm Mexican and Italian. I hug and kiss everybody. I'm going to do like 312 years in jail because my wife kissed. You can't do that. And I, we got, I don't know, 12, 13 women that work for us. I hug and kiss all of them. They're all my daughters. I, I have three sons. They have no daughters. And they're all beautiful. My wife kisses. You can't do that. You can't do that. She's sitting there back there shaking her head at me going, I still tell you you can't do that. <laughs> it's all right, they can't afford me, so that's okay. All right, so all these are going to be reasons why somebody would, employ, would uh, sue you, and the attorneys are taking these claims and going crazy. Claims are up 400% in the last four years. Do you need the coverage? Yes, you do, EPLI. You're looking somewhere around $1,200, $1,500 a year for it, really cheap. You're looking at $30,000 to defend you. What to do in case of an incident? You cry, then you call me. <laughs> you want to make sure that you document everything really good, folks. And why do you document really good? Your turnover with employees is horrible. If you get one that lasts six months, it's long term. When you get sued, 
you got to understand that it's not going to happen right away. It's going to happen six months, 12 months, a, a year and a half before the statute of limitations runs out. It's amazing how they have a record when that injury happened and they'll file a lawsuit against you the week before the statute runs out. Attorneys are slick like that. You want to collect and inspect, excuse me, you want to preserve that item so it doesn't come up missing. So if it's a slide, they said that uh, it was ripped, take that, no longer in inventory. Set that off of the side, make sure your attorney knows about it. Collect statements from, from spectators and employees the day of the event. Very explicit, long descriptions of what happened on your employees. I want to know if the sun was shining, if there was clouds, I want to know if the wind was up, I want to know if they had the kid in the red shirt, was a complete idiot and jerk when you got there, if the parent was obnoxious, if they were drunk when you got there, everything that you can put in that description. Because when that employee's not there, you can't go back and get the story. They moved, got married, went to college, whatever. All right. Take pictures. Pictures are worth a thousand words. Everybody has a smartphone, right? Four-year-olds have smartphones now. It's stupid. And they know how to use them. Matter of fact, they can set them up better than we can. Every delivery ought to have a picture. The location before and the location after it's set up. Showing how many stakes you had in there. Showing where your signage is. Showing that you had cones on all the stakes. So nobody runs into them. Or if they run into them, they have protection. Save those. Put those into your database. All right, notify your insurance company immediately. Don't wait. As soon as there's an incident. Doesn't matter how bad it is. Report every single incident. An incident is when somebody gets injured. Trips, falls, bloody nose. Doesn't matter. That's an incident. Doesn't make your insurance go up. But your insurance contract states in the policy that you will notify the insurance company of any and all incidents. If you don't do it, you're going to jeopardize your coverage potentially. Because you didn't let them know. Especially if you knew about it. If you don't know about it, no big deal. But if you know about it, report it. If necessary, get an attorney. All right. How long are you supposed to retain all this paperwork that you go through? Rental agreements, waivers, yada, yada, yada. Accident reports and claims, seven years. Anything having to do with an employee, three years. Waivers, seven years. If the accident is settled, four more years after it's settled. Contract, seven years. And if you have an accident that hasn't settled, do not get rid of the paperwork. I scan everything, save everything, and got backups. How many people have backups on their computer? Very good. How many people backed up before they left? One. So what happens when your building burns down while you're here? Or your house? Folks, back up every day, have one set off site. Um, if you work out of your house, have another set somewhere else at somebody else's house. If your house burns down, you have documentation. Has all your records, everything scanned into it, you're fine. You can do online backups even. But if you don't back up your stuff, it is not a defense of ignorance. You can't claim ignorance in a, for a defense in a lawsuit. So have your backups. Do your, you know, we have some people that, that put it on a, a CD or DVD and they email it to a family member so that they have it. Not a big deal. Give it to an employee to take home so they have a copy of it. All right. So who do you call if you have a claim? Call me. He's a nice guy. Look at that guy. He's a great guy. Look how young he looks. Grecian formula. I tried that. What a joke. What a pain. Oh my God. Women, I feel for you. I did it for Halloween on my goatee because I was Captain Morgan and I forgot to take the stuff off and my whole face was stained. It's embarrassing. All right. Different types of protection. You can have a, a Ruger or an insurance policy, whichever one works for you. All of them work. We're going to talk to you about why. Everybody wants a little piece of paper. It's called a certificate of insurance. What the heck is it? It's the most useless piece of paper in the industry, folks. All that piece of paper is to make somebody happy in corporate America. The first paragraph on the very top, has anybody ever read it? It says it doesn't apply to anything. 
The policy is the only thing that matters. This is just a piece of paper. It'll show liability coverage if you have it. Umbrella, property, workers' comp, auto, all those will be covered. It tells you that you'll have insurance policy for certain dates. Let's look at what you get on that little piece of paper. Let's look at that top paragraph. This certificate is issued as a matter of information only. <laughs> it converts no rights upon the certificate holder. The certificate does not affirmatively or negatively amend, extend, or alter coverage. It's useless. It's useless. But everybody wants one. All right. So what is it going to show? Very important that if you have a subcontractor that you deal with, that the subcontractor's insurance agent is the only one that gets you the certificate. There's so much falsification of insurance going on today, folks, that you want to make sure it comes from the agent, not from the person you hire. So if you're subcontracting a rock wall, you're, if you're subcontracting tables, tents, and chairs, you want to make sure that that insurance agent sends you an additional insured certificate. It's a useless piece of paper, but it helps. That means that they're going to defend you in a court of law. All right, so what it's going to do is it's going to have the name of the agent, the insur whoever's insured, the name of the business, the company. Another thing while we're t on this, most people have a corporation, some people do sole proprietorship. Some people do business in different names, have different websites. How many people have more than one we website with different names? Are all those listed on your insurance application? Did you list all of them? If they're not listed, there's no coverage to defend. You think so? Yeah. The bar will be open, Captain Morgan in the back. If you do not explain to your insurance agent all of the different DBAs that you use, the insurance company does not have to defend what they don't know about, only what they know about. So if you disclose it on the front side, there's coverage. If you don't disclose it, there's no coverage. Don't get caught like that. So you're, it doesn't have to show up on here, all the websites, but on your application, disclose it to your agent to make sure that he, if he doesn't disclose it to the insurance company, but you have it on the application, shame on him. You did your job. So always disclose it. Make sure it's in writing. Make sure you have a copy that he got it, email back and forth. All right. You'll have the insurance companies on there. It'll show that you have general liability. You want to make sure that you always have an occurrence policy, not a claims made. Claims made. Um, anybody have ICERA? ICERA is a modified claims made policy. It means the claim's only going to get paid if it's reported during that policy period. So if a claim happens six months after the policy expires and you didn't notify the insurance company, you have no defense coverage. It's a lot cheaper for that reason because it's only covering a 12 month period. An occurrence policy, on the other hand, covers you for the whole time that you had coverage and any time after that that you get named in a lawsuit, as long as it falls within the statute of limitations for your state. So if your policy runs January to December and you have an injury in October and you don't know about it, but you get sued next August, they'll still defend you with an occurrence policy. All right, policy effective dates. You want to make sure that those are in there. There's a policy number. You're going to have your limits on the side. This one, you notice it was a smart person. He had hired an unknown auto. On the bottom, description of operations. You want to make sure that it has a good description of what that business is. I can't tell you how many ladies' dress shops that I've seen certificate of insurance for, and they're also running a rental company. That insurance company doesn't know that they're doing a rental. So you want that description of oper operations to say exactly what they do. This one says party equipment rental operations. That's exactly what they do. Certificate holder named as additional insured. If you're not named as additional insured from that subcontractor, there's no coverage. When a park asks you for a certificate of insurance, naming them as additional insured before you can go on there, they want to make sure that if you go on there and you set up an inflatable and you do it wrong or somebody gets injured because you didn't put the stakes in far enough, it blows away, that your policy defends them. That's what additional insured status means. Even simpler, if you're a general contractor, you don't swing a hammer. 
You don't do the electrical. You hire a framer, you hire an electrical contractor, and you hire a roofer. You don't do any of it yourself. He has an insurance policy that names me as additional insured. They name me, and they name me as additional insured. If he puts on a roof that leaks, that homeowner is going to sue me, and I'm going to go saying, you did the roof. Indemnify me. Pay me for it. As long as I'm named as additional insured, it'll cover that. If I just have a piece of paper saying he has insurance, he's covered, but I don't get defended. So you want to make sure subcontractors name you as additional insured. Be real careful with fake certificates. With Adobe, you can go ahead and change things. <laughs> real easy. Some people don't know to change the font size or the font style, <laughs> and so we catch them a lot. Yeah, you'd think that they'd be better. All right, you need to be named additional insured. Certificate holder does you no good. Ask for the endorsement, the additional insured endorsement, and always have it sent from the agent. That way you know it's not getting falsified. Have trained uh, employees follow the safety guidelines every single time, folks. Not when it's convenient. Not because you're in a hurry. Every single time, all the time. Have the correct wording in your rental agreement and contract. Have the correct signage. If you, don't raise your hand. But if you went on the internet and got your rental agreement and waiver and copied somebody else's, you just copied somebody else's mistake. Take several copies of different ones, take them to your attorney, pay the $300 for them to review it, and give you the best one, because the wording is state-specific on a waiver or a rental agreement. It's not the same for all 50 states. Protect your, st your stakes and generators with cones. A lot of people don't want to do that. One of the biggest claims we have, kids are running by the stake. Put the big orange cone on it, aren't they? What does it cost, $4? and you have a ton of stakes on each one. That means that, that that's a potential claim each time. Do you have directions for your customers? Are they in writing? They're real simple. Are they on the rental agreement? Do they sign it, making sure they understand it? They initial each, each line? The more you have them sign that stupid piece of paper, the more initials that they put on there, the better protected you are. Because the judge is gonna say, well, which one of these didn't you understand? You initialed all these. These are all on the side of the Inflatables, we already know all the warnings. What items have more claims? Interactive devices. Yeah, that's what they want. Yeah, but that's what has the most claims. Because they act like idiots, and then they come after you guys because you didn't warn them not to act like idiots. Sumo suits, mechanical bulls. Bulls are a lot more safer now than what they are before. But if you don't have a trained operator that you train really good to make sure that they don't get upset, because that person is flapping his lip, talking trash, and just slams it into 10 just to teach him a lesson, <laughs> shut him up. Well, now you've hurt his feelings because all of his friends are around. And all of a sudden he'll get up and, oh man, you hurt his feelings more than anything else. Um, don't set him up on concrete or on the sidewalk where they get in and out. Opposite of smart. Simple things like that. Make sure your employees know how to do it. All right, who's going to get named in a lawsuit? Everybody. Everybody out there is going to get named. That's how attorneys do it, because they're going to get money from everybody to buy out, let them out. So you want to make sure that you have that coverage. Professional liability, if you arrange to have the party, anybody do set a party, do subcontracting of cakes, tents, table chairs? <coughs> Professional liability is going to take care of that for you. Most general liability policies exclude professional liability. Professionals are expected to have extensive technical knowledge that most people aren't going to have. The average Joe Blow won't do it. You're going to have some type of training. You've done it before. You've done it for a couple of years. You're putting together something. So they're going to expect to get what you tell them. So if your contract's real clear about what you're going to give, this is what I'm giving. This is what you're going to get. If there's any type of vague wording in there that says you're going to have a party, that's pretty vague. Then they're going to come back and sue you because you didn't give them the party with all the bells and whistles. Failure to provide services is the biggest reason that you get sued 
if you're doing event planning. All right, do I need that coverage? Real easy. What is it? Can't be a little bit pregnant. All right, that's a brief overview. Kind of tells you what's happening. In a nutshell, the people that have had claims, their insurance premiums are going from a couple thousand to 30, 40,000. On the Indoor Center, it's a lot worse. They're going up to excess of 60 to 100,000. So as a business owner, if you don't take steps to ensure that you're doing the right thing every time, you open yourself up for a lawsuit and your insurance premiums, either the company's gonna go away, nobody will wanna insure you anymore and your business is gonna go bye-bye. It's a pain to do it, but documentation's key, training is key, and hire people that are gonna treat the business as close to you as possible. Nobody's gonna do it the same.